daily light. Finally, we have some cloud cover. It's not daily light. <laughs> it's daily overcast. And sometimes I like that. It gives me a chance to kind of regroup my summer activities, get some other things done, like spending time with the Lord, with you, and reading my word that he's given to us so that we could share and to turn our attention away from all the things that we sometimes think we need to do to those things which he would have us enjoy with him. His commandments are not grievous. This is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. If you love me, keep my commandments. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Happy is the man that finds wisdom, and the man that gets understanding. Her ways of wisdom are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. I delight in the law of God after the inward man. This is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, and love one another. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. You know, it doesn't get much clearer than that. And when we do want to, in reality, see Jesus as he is, if we want him to appear before us right now, if we want him to speak to us clearly, meaning that you could hear him and not have to get this reading idea and block out everything and focus in on you know a certain word or a certain theme that fits your circumstances, you know, God promised that he would come in and sup with us. He would come in sit with us, he would come to us in a very personal and real way. And the only reason we don't have that, and there's only one reason, we don't keep his commandment, which is to love one another. The evidence of it is all around us, but the one thing that you can count on from yourself and for myself is that if we loved him as we say we do, then we would do like he said to just love one another. The rest can all solve itself. It really can. But we choose to do things that add to blocking our knowledge of the holy, our knowledge of God, our realization that God could very much so speak to us direct and very much so cause us to come to a place of seeing Him and him opening the sky for us and revealing himself and even walking with us to the point where he could take us walking straight into heaven like Enoch. Or he could take us like John to the day of salvation. <laughs> Is that what you want? If you do, keep his commandments. Just love one another and love Jesus. Remember not the sins of my youth nor my transgressions. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions and as a cloud thy sins. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember your sins. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Thou wilt cast all their sin into the depths of the sea. Thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast called, for thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. 
Who is a God like unto thee, that pardons iniquity? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delights in mercy. Unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. You know, when we sin, we don't think of the price and the payment that God required of us. We just go do what we want to do. And then God says, you're dead, literally. And though you don't die the moment you commit sin, you have that verdict of guilty stamped all over you. And should you take that verdict without it a reversal to heaven, say you die right after you sin, and guess what? You're going to hell. But if you become born again, not only has your verdict been set aside, but your final resolution of all that you've been put on probation for has been put behind you as you move forward in Jesus because he took care of past, present, and future. So, on the one hand, we have been forgiven all our sins. And on the other hand, we need to learn to not sin anymore to choose the more excellent way. Because if we do, if we choose a more excellent way that God described, that he said that love covers a multitude of sins and that his love was so manifest in his son that he gave his life for us that it could remove all of our sins, past, present, and future, then how much more so could we, who once we have been saved, because we love like Jesus loved, cause someone else to not only not sin, to find salvation, to find eternal life, to find the realization that if they, too, would just love, like Jesus loves, then they would see God. He said he would manifest himself. Do you want to see Jesus? Really? It's just, like the song says, all you need is love. How you get that will be through your devotions, your emotions, your caring and loving and sharing of the commandments of God that he commanded you from day one, which was simply to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength, to love your neighbor as yourself, loving Jesus. doesn't get any more than that. There is no other commandments. You can list the ten. They don't count. Because the one thing that counts most of all to God is that you love. And when you're born again, when God causes you to be born out of this flesh into His Spirit, then, and only then, we would be able to love. Because anyone can love a hamburger, but can you love God?